The summer is heating up and so are our product releases here with Zoom webinars and events. Let's jump right in. Last month, we saw the release of AI content generation and things are already getting better. Introducing AI generated video snippets. You can now target a recording and within just a few moments, our powerful AI model will you will look at the transcript, identify the most potent moments and create three to five short video clips for you all between 30 seconds and three minutes long. Once you have that clip in hand, it's simple to upload it to Zoom Clips for additional collaboration or maybe some editing or publish to one of your video channels for your audience to enjoy. I bet you will have no problem finding tons of great uses for these video snippets. So what are you waiting for? Go check this out. Go get started today. We would love feedback uh, from you on this. Also this month, we have introduced new text-based content types for content generation as well. So let's go through just a few of these summaries and key takeaways are new, and they create content that's focused on the what or the so what of your session recording. Social media posts, both short and long forms, are super, super helpful, depending on uh, whatever your platform of choice may be. Or just imagine sending an ebook that's ready to go immediately following your training session, or an all hands recap that's ready to send to your organization, keeping everybody on the same page. All of this is possible today with Zoom webinars and events. If, if you're not seeing this uh, create AI content button, not seeing these features, be sure to contact your account admin and work with them to enable these features for your account. We're so excited to see what you all create using these features. Event emails are easier to manage than ever starting this month. Our new interface allows you to readily see all of your email content in one place, along with the audience, the trigger, and the email status. We've also moved to a clearer one trigger equals one template mode to help you deliver clear and accurate messages. For example, reminder emails used to send the same template uh, three different times. Now each reminder is a separate email template that can be customized however you want. We've also introduced some basic user segmentation with things like conditions and filters and uh, segments. It's easier now to get the right message to the right people. This is a very exciting uh, step forward for Email Builder and more functionality will be coming uh, later this year. Go check it out. Explore that today. We continue to refine the post-event experience for attendees. Language and CTA adjustments continue to roll out. You can see this here on the slide, register on demand, that's very clear. And we've also removed a major friction point where users who had previously registered would hit an error message saying, hey, go use your ticket. Uh, not, you can't re-register here. Well, we've eliminated that error message and now we simply capture the re-registration along with any new information. And we consolidate that info and most importantly, deliver your attendee straight to your on-demand content just the way that it should be. A quick update for the content hub. Event hosts can now control which sections of their hub are seen first with visibility toggles and reordering. This is all found down in the content hub section of your, your hub. In addition, we've added a My List feature, which allows your hub attendees to favorite their own events and keep them right at the top for uh, their repeat visits. This is perfect for uh, training and enablement programs, maybe in internal communications hubs, or anywhere where there's a, a larger community forming around your event content. So check this out. It makes a nice clean hub. Uh, today is a really, really great day. Webinar breakout rooms can now be recorded locally. So exciting. Hosts and co-hosts can now join a breakout room and hit record. Uh, obviously, with this being a local recording, you'll need to find a, a place or a system for them to upload those files if you want to look at them uh, once the session has concluded. But this opens up all kinds of uh, different possibilities. I love the format of having a nice, organized, nicely produced webinar with one-to-one -one or face-to-face -face, uh, conversations happening as well. So many different use cases really unlocks the all of the potential of Zoom webinars. And now you can record those conversations as well. Be sure to check that out immediately. And a nice Q&A update for us all. Now, as you mark questions to be answered live, I love to do that. I like to respond to as many questions live as I can if I'm leading a training of some sort. Now there is a done button. When you've answered it, you can now hit done and it moves it over to the answered section. And it used to do that, but it's a nice way now to make sure you've responded to all of the open questions and helps you feel and stay nice and organized when you're hosting your events out there. 
Two nice updates for our video CMS solution. The first is that resources are now available. PDFs and other file types can be added to that on-demand video page as well as the channel detail pages. We'll take a look at that, there you go. This is a great way to provide value to your audience and really, really powerful when you combine this feature with our AI content generation features as well. This is a premium feature that does require an advanced CMS license. So if you don't have that, be sure to reach out to your Zoom specialist for assistance. We'd be happy to help you get the right licensing. Next, small update, but really powerful. We've also extended the video description character limit, the box from 500 characters up to 5,000, gives you plenty of room for plenty of information for your audience. I, I love that. I like being plenty verbose to help people find the content that is in my, uh, my video. Our final two features this month are both on the admin side and are very helpful. Admins can now toggle on or off the various elements of in-session resources. Maybe your particular organization loves speaker bios and links, but discourages file sharing. No problem. You can now set this up super simple. You can set this up at the account level, at the group level, or even at the uh, user level if you need to. And final, final feature for June, admins can now transfer assets from any hub on their account to another hub. This applies even from inactive hubs. Super, super helpful. Cubs can become inactive for all kinds of different reasons. So all the normal transfer rules apply, but I think all of us will, uh, will really appreciate this increase in flexibility. As always, for a full list of these release notes, go check out support.zoom.com. Also, don't neglect our community over at community.zoom.com. There's a great user community, plenty of solutions, plenty of uh, answers and questions and all kinds of different things going on over there. We would love to see you engage there. Thank you for choosing Zoom webinars and events. Have a great month. We will see you in July.